Now, a lot of my photographs of the 90s were about uh, certain places, looking at places which uh, I felt had some kind of contradiction inherent in them, um, some, kind of, uh, some kind of antinomy, or uh, this case of something which is uh, where two, there are two truths that exist there uh, that are somehow contradictory. I go to a place, I explore a place, in a way using this medium of photography to meet people who live there almost as a pretext and to sort of do research into the, the history of that place. Because much of my work over the past uh, 30 years has been somehow involved in um, historical uh, and archival research. When I got back from Germany, I lived there for a year, uh, I wanted to go see the place that was the most um, Ur British Columbian location possible. So I wanted to go see this place before the, the rain set in. And I spent about another maybe four trips going to this area called Nuka Sound, which is on the west coast of Vancouver Island and the place of first contact between uh, Europeans and, and natives uh, in this part of the world. Uh, this is a place called Gold River, which was the, the winter home of the Malachat people. But of course, as you see now, um, industrialized, and there's a, a big mill in this location. A lot of these photographs show very uh, large open landscapes, and the first impression of many people who don't know what they're looking at is that they're being shown a natural environment. Uh, when in fact, this is actually um, a place that had been um, controlled and manipulated by humans over uh, uh, years, tens, hundreds, thousands of years. When I came upon this place to, to go see the strange, or having noticed this, this strange uh, building from a highway, which is kind of a power station that looks like a, a gothic uh, vampire chateau or something, that's sort of like out of, made out of very, very crude cement, uh, cement forms. Uh, when I went to investigate to see what it was and, and asking why it was called Ruskin, I discovered that it was named for, a, um, named for John Ruskin because a community of um, uh, utopian socialists uh, went there to build a uh, community that would live according to Ruskinian principles uh, of, of socialism. This place kind of felt like a, a microcosm of the conditions of Vancouver, both because of the, uh, the power plant here and this mill which actually exists on the site uh, of the uh, Ruskinian commune. And those little specks of, of um, uh, white that you see in the distance between where we are here and the, the power plant at the back, in effect what we're seeing here is a reverse shot of the previous shot, is a, 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 a complex of mobile homes. Uh, there's additional photograph not here that shows these homes in detail, but again, here's this uh, condition of the transient um, communities that, that uh, grew up uh, in this area of, of Vancouver. So in a way, this, this series uh, of Ruskin photographs uh, in detail uh, an emblematic microcosm of, that, um, of the culture of, of British Columbia. And the final series from 1998 uh, to 99 uh, are called Detroit photographs. Um, these came from seeing Detroit and being sort of fascinated by the strange psychogeography of the area, uh, where vast areas of the city have been destroyed.
This is the Michigan Central Station, uh, also abandoned. Every, um, almost every window in that building is, has been smashed. And this has been, been empty for, again, uh, from 80, 98, 99, had been empty for at least 20 years and exposed to the weather. But a, a sort of a site of often uh, massive raves and, and parties for the 1990s. Michigan Theater in downtown Detroit. It's actually on the site of the first Model A um, uh, workshop where Henry Ford made his first uh, first car. Uh, in the 1920s, it was made into a, uh, a film palace for showing silent films, but the more recent owner uh, realized he'd make more money if he made a parking lot out of that instead of using it as a, as a movie theater. The next series of works, which I made in 1995, were called uh, Potsdamer Schrebergarten. Uh, Schrebergartens are a certain kind of allotment gardens, uh, named for a guy named uh, Moritz Schreber. Moritz Schreber was um, an educator who lived in the city of Leipzig, Germany. Anyway, after Schreber had died, um, in his name, the people in the city of Leipzig wanted to have these, um, uh, an association that would have a, a plot of land and a little shack that would um, contain uh, exercise equipment that would allow children to uh, offset the uh, evil effects of industrialization by uh, having a place to play and do calisthenics based on the Swedish model promoted by, by Schreber uh, in these little lobbing gardens. <laughs> 